Today we're going to take the PTO housing assembly off, remove it from the engine block, do a little bit of maintenance on that. Last time we covered the shaft, we removed the prop, replaced the bushing, and oiled up the shaft. So today, remove the shaft, take the PTO housing off, clean all that out, check all my screws, my keys, make sure everything's nice and tight, re-grease everything, reassemble, and get ready for the trip down the river. As always, anytime I'm working on the engine or the boat, we're using the tools provided with the boat. Because if I can't do it here, I can't do it on the water. The toolbox here. I believe what we're going to need is going to be a 13 millimeter. millimeter that's it let's get this shaft off real fast Now that the shaft's out of the PTO, we'll remove the PTO from the engine block. Four bolts removed, PTO housing slides right off. We're going to clean all the old grease out. Once the PTO housing is off, we find our coupler. This connects the splines and the long tail into the crankshaft of the motor. We have two bolts on this side that bolt into a keyway. So we're going to rotate this to a position see there we go we'll take these two off right here it's 10 millimeter Two 10 millimeter bolts are removed from the coupler. We'll pull that off with the crankshaft. Pretty simple. Doesn't look too bad. We got a key here. The rest of the groove for the key is where the bolts sit into. So as you put the coupler on, the bolts have a shoulder that will engage into your keyway. Once that's off, we're going to clean up this area. We'll move into the shop, finish up cleaning up the PTO housing and couple. We're in the shop now, we're going to work on cleaning up the PTO housing and coupler. We have the four bolts to mount the housing to the engine, and the two bolts to mount the coupler to the shaft. Pretty simple process, nothing special. <coughs> we're out of cleaning, we're going to inspect everything, make sure everything looks good. There's no wear, no scrapes. we got a lock washer on each of our bolts here. The rest looking good. 
Oh, got a little bit of rest on it. Oh, I got another. Leave it on fire, Bill. The copper bolts has one of these lock washers on it. Two good hands. Both of those look great. The coupler has got a little rub on it right here. It's more of a polish. There's no shoulder, no step off. That could be just where it was a little off-centered on that shaft when I installed it. Otherwise, the coupler is looking good. The keyway is intact, no corrosion. No damage. The splines are all looking good. Don't feel anything in there. I'm not finding any metal shavings. PTO housing. On the PTO housing, we have the grease cup. The newer models have the grease zerk. So I'm thinking about changing over to a grease zerk, maybe installing one on here, or replacing the cup all together. I don't know yet. There's a lot of grease in this thing. I made me a little tool. These are just stuff I had laid around. This is an old lightning rod. And that is the spike in off an of old flagpole. And I was messing around one day and I stuck them together and don't know why. But what I found out is it's really good for reaching in these shafts like that. Scraping out the grease. No, I don't keep this on my boat. I don't plan on doing maintenance on the water with this. This is off in the shop maintenance. Now on the PTO housing, you're going to see on the bottom a small hole. A lot of people ask about the small hole. What's it there for? Is it a def uh, defect? Do I need to plug it? Do I need to seal it off? No, you don't. We need to keep it clean actually. So when I'm doing my maintenance here, I make sure that hole is open and clean. That is to allow expansion inside the PTO housing to let out excess grease or water that may get into the housing. You can use anything to clean that out. I do have a series of uh, picks on the boat, mainly for cleaning out carburetor jets and things like that. But once we got it out, we'll make sure that's good and open. I can see light through it. Check the inside of the housing. I don't see any rust, no corrosion. The housing is intact, no cracks anywhere, no cracks on the flange. 
my rust. This is uh this shaft is P2 housing looking great. Hey, we got all of our components checked, cleaned up. We're ready to start reinstall. We're gonna go to the boat and put the coupler on first, and then we'll come back and get the PTO housing and talk a little bit about what we do before we put that on. All right, we're back out at the boat. We're gonna put the coupler back on the shaft. We're gonna line up the keyhole with the key, and we're gonna start one of the 10 millimeter bolts before we do that. We're gonna go with the bolt hole that's closest to the engine. You may be tempted to put them both in to start with, don't, I'm gonna show you why. We're gonna engage this just into the threads so the bolt don't enter into the keyway area. We don't want it to make it more difficult to install this. That should slide right on. Give me a little piece of wood, my little hammer. Few taps, make sure she's set home. Yeah, I keep me a little piece of wood on the boat. It's not a toolbox, so. I'm gonna tighten this all the way up now. This is why we don't put this bolt in. We put the first one in, because we can't go this way because of the motor. And if I put the second one in, I can't go this way because of the bolt. So put this one on. Get it tightened down. How tight does it go? All right. Uh, I'd say one ugga, no dugga. Right about there. The washer isn't moving. We know the bolt's all the way down. We're in the keyway. Start the second one. Thread in by hand. I don't want to cross thread these little boys. Be in trouble. You don't start there. You see the I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn. Like I said, don't crank this thing down. No ugga duggas. Just one ugga. You're good. That's not moving. You want to put a little bit of Loctite on there? Yeah, go ahead and do that. I hadn't done it on mine. Never had a problem with it. There you go. The coupler is on the crankshaft. Let's go get the PTO housing and get it prepared to go on next. All right, we're back in the shop. We got the coupler on. It's time to prepare the PTO housing. Well, what we got to do to a PTO housing to prepare it to go on? Good question. Glad you asked. Remember all that grease we took out? All that old nasty grease? We got to put some new grease in there. I do use marine grease. How much do we put in there? The whole tube. I'm just gonna pop this tube open and squeeze it right in there. This little area right here, I get a little bit of grease on there. I'm all right with that. We put too much in there. I'm all right with that. You can't put too much in here. You can fill it up 100%. You squeeze this thing on the engine and squeeze that shaft in there. That grease is not going to bother it. Okay, we need it. So, let me get some gloves on. Got my handy dandy grease tool. Put me a little rubber washer on there. And we just put that whole tube in there. We all got the shaft almost completely done. Now we gotta take the grease cup off and clean that out. So open up the grease cup, twist it counterclockwise. It's got some, seems like threads that last forever. And inside you see we got some used grease. We're gonna clean all that out. Clean the excess right out of the lid there. 
you can see the way the grease changed color. Still got some fresh grease in there. That's all right. I wasn't familiar with the grease coat system when I got this engine, but my dad was, and he explained to me that's the way they used to do it. It works. I get the grease out of here, and I'll have any special tools. Use my finger. It's amazing what you do with a glove on. We got a pretty good mixture of old grease and new grease in here, which I guess is a good sign. That's why plenty of grease in the shaft still. So we'll put grease back in the cup. Good my grease gun, give me a nice little blob of grease there. And we're literally just gonna shove it right back into the cup like that. All right, I am using marine grease for this, just because it does can work its way into the water. So fill that cup up. We'll fill the lid up. That's pretty much it. We'll just screw the lid back down onto the cup now. That's it. The more you squeeze it down, the more grease it pushes into the shaft. And this is how you can grease it. On the boat, we'll have grease and we'll open that up, fill it up make sure all that's maintained pretty well on the trip and now that the pto shaft is all done we've greased up the inside earlier we greased up the grease cup let's go put it back on the engine get my four bolts my two t bolts and i'll see you outside of the boat all right we're back out here at the boat we're going to put the pto housing back on the engine pretty simple Grease cup facing up. We see this bad boy slam full. I'm gonna slide it right on to the coupler. Right up to the engine. Nice flush mount. We'll get our bolts out. Start hand tightening these. All right, once these are on hand tight, we're gonna tighten them up. I'm not really putting any real pressure on them right now. I'm just getting that slack out. All righty, how tight do the bolts go? These I give them a ugga dugga. All right, don't put no air hammer on it, guys. Use your wrench, get them down nice and hand tight. Doing the star pattern across, so do that one. I'll do this one. I didn't go from that guy down to this guy. And then go back. See if this is lost any. See if this needs any more tightening. Just a little bit. Back over here. He's good. Back on this guy. He's good. Back on this guy. He's good. Try to run away from me there. Alright, BTO housing is back on. Alright, so we got everything cleaned up, inspected, everything's looking good. We got the housing on, everything's greased up and torqued down. We're going to put the shaft back in. Our T bolts, no, I didn't paint them. 
get them started. Awesome. We'll get that shaft set back in. Using a piece of wood, we're going to strike the shaft on the skeg to drive this home. We talked about excess grease. You can see the grease coming out of the pee hole there. It's what it's supposed to do. It tells me I got enough grease in this guy. Now it's not six o'clock to the boat, it's six o'clock to the engine because right now we're at a little bit of an angle. If I pull this around straight with the boat, I'm looking pretty good. All right, we see that the shaft is fully engaged into the PTO housing. Now all we gotta do is tighten up these T-bolts and that's it. Yearly maintenance on the PTO housing on a mud skipper, 85 inch long shaft. I appreciate you sticking around. I'll see you at the next video.